something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Hey everybody, this is Dan and this week I want to talk about uh, transformative technologies specifically electricity um, and, and there are a couple of reasons that this topic is important at this stage of our class. Um, first, since we just recently came off uh, the reading excerpts of Railroaded by Richard White, it's appropriate to talk about technologies of uh, distance and space. As some of you correctly identified on the discussion board when asked about uh, the commonalities between the telegraph and the railroad, uh, you mentioned space and distance uh, because both of these technologies obviously opened up uh, distance and certainly electricity uh, does that as well. Yes, the telegraph was uh, you know the first uh, electrical technology if you will and it was invented in 1848 but it was really a closed system that that basically ran on batteries and um, the the practical incandescent light bulb uh, electrification in homes and businesses as we know it today uh, wasn't going to be uh, invented or deployed until the 1880s so the telegraph was was way ahead of the game um, so what I want to talk about is electrification or the beginnings of electrification as as you and I know it today that is uh, systems um, uh, electrical lines running into homes, running into businesses, and of course the uh, electrical light bulb and the beginnings of electrical uh, uh, appliances that we confront on a daily basis. Really electricity as a social technology if you will. Uh, second, I think that electricity is important to talk about because it's sort of a stealthy technology that totally changed the way that we confront our world. If you live in Ohio, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of the electric power you use comes from burning coal. And it's, it's a real simple process. The, the coal is dug from the ground, uh, it's shipped to power plants, usually via the railroad. Uh, it gets burnt in a boiler, which heats water, which produces steam, and, and that steam uh, runs turbines. The turbines run generators and the electricity runs via wire into your home or, or into your business. Um, every night when you plug your high-tech iPhone into the wall to charge, you're actually using coal and steam to power that iPhone. Uh, every time you post on Facebook, every time you send an email, it's ultimately coal and steam that's running the show. Now, uh, it takes about five or six pounds of coal a year to uh, charge your iPhone, and in Ohio alone, we burn 45 million tons of coal a year and produce about 120 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions. And, you know, for the most part, we don't think about it in our day-to-day -day lives. I know I rarely think about coal when I use my cell phone. I have a piece of coal here. Um, and I don't think m many of you think about coal when you use your high-tech devices either. And, and, and this is why electrification in the late 1800s is such a big deal really for the first time in human history electricity uh, was an energy source that separated um, uh, power generation from power consumption and you know power plants most of us don't see them on a regular basis they're usually outside of high population areas um, and and electricity because of this idea of removal of the power plants is kind of an out of sight out of mind uh, technology now if we're going to build a moral economy and if we're going to talk about sustainability we need to at least be aware of our carbon footprint and um, the where the energy we, we're using comes from so you know I'm not saying electricity is a bad thing but I think it's important that we start the conversation and maintain some awareness of uh, of our power consumption now for the reading this week I'm, I'm gonna take advantage of you a little bit uh, we're gonna read two chapters from a book that I wrote that will be published sometime next year and uh, those two chapters are chapter 5 and chapter 6 now since you're starting on chapter 5 there's gonna be a few spots where you don't really know what I'm talking about uh, one piece of information that's gonna be helpful 
is knowing that in 1876 there was a major World's Fair in Philadelphia. It was the centennial celebration of the United States, the 100th anniversary. And at that fair, and that fair, by the way, I think, you know, like a fifth of the people in the country uh, attended that fair back in 1876, so it's, it's pretty amazing. But um, at that fair, there uh, was on display some crude lighting systems, uh, some arc lights, some crude generators. Um, sort of the big deal at that fair was that Alexander Graham Bell introduced the telephone at that fair. So like the telegraph, the telephone was an electrical appliance that was introduced before electrification was in homes and before the light bulb was even invented or, or the practical incandescent light bulb was invented. So, so the phone's a big deal. But also at that fair was Thomas Edison and he did not have his light bulb uh, perfected yet uh, but he was there with telegraph equipment which was really sort of his first love and the first category of inventions that uh, he patented. Now a lot of the reading in the first chapter of the work is about the technology of electricity itself in historic perspective. So it's, it's kind of a geeky reading. Uh, it may be interesting, or I hope it's interesting for some of you. Uh, the second chapter, chapter six, may be of more interest, and I think it's probably the more important chapter uh, in perspective. It's, it's the chapter that I really want you to grasp. Um, you know, there's a reason we don't think much about electricity in our day-to-day -day lives, and there's a reason that uh, we're drawn to all kinds of electrical gadgetry because it's, it's you know, really all perceived and seen as uh, clean technology. And um, again, I'd like you to think about that and think about uh, the coal that ultimately uh, runs all the things that we use. Now, keep in mind as you're reading about all this stuff, uh, especially in Chapter 6, you're going to read about uh, Niagara Falls and the opening of Niagara Falls in the late 1800s. You're going to read about utopian novels, which were a real popular genre of, of writing in the late 1880s, uh, especially a, a novel by a gentleman named Bellamy that I think, if you're not are already aware of it, you'll find it pretty fascinating. Um, and, and, you know, think about this, electrification, Niagara Falls, uh, ad advancements in lighting, in electrical generation uh, is all going on at the same time that Carnegie and Rockefeller are getting rich, that the Transcontinental Railroad is, is crossing the country. So uh, this period is, is truly a defining era uh, for the United States, this, this, this really last 30 years of the 1800s. Um, one last thing, as you read through all this stuff, I'd love to have your feedback um, on the reading, of course, and uh, on anything else. And uh, next week, uh, the plan right now is to pick it back up again and, and get back into business. And we're going to talk about Madison Avenue and the rise of modern advertising next week, which, which starts to happen um, uh, right at the beginning of the 1900s. So that's it for now. Have a great day. Take care. Lord and Mary took to running with a traveling man Left her mama crying with her head in her hand Such a sad case, so broken hearted She said, Mom, I gotta go, I gotta get out of here I gotta get out of town, I'm tired of hanging around I gotta roll on between the ditches It's just an ordinary story about the way things goes Around and around, nobody knows but the highway goes on forever that old highway goes on forever